thank you for joining me on this adventure. Your presence means the world to me. It's a pleasure to have you join us as we uncover the secrets of the BMJ. The BMJ is a weekly peer-reviewed medical trade journal published by the trade union the British Medical Association BMA. The BMJ has editorial freedom from the BMA. It is one of the world's oldest general medical journals. Originally called the British Medical Journal, the title was officially shortened to BMJ in 1988 and then changed to the BMJ in 2014. The journal is published by BMJ Publishing Group Limited, a subsidiary of the British Medical Association BMA. The editor-in-chief of the BMJ is Cameron Obossi, who was appointed in January 2022. In this section, we'll be peeling back the layers of history to reveal its true essence. The journal began publishing on 3 October 1840 as the Provincial Medical and Surgical Journal and quickly attracted the attention of physicians around the world through its publication of high-impact original research articles and unique case reports. The BMS first editors were P. Hennis Green, lecturer on the diseases of children at the Hunterian School of Medicine, who also was its founder and Robert Streeton of Worcester, a member of the Provincial Medical and Surgical Association Council. The first issue of the Provincial Medical and Surgical Journal PMSJ was 16 pages long and contained three simple woodcut illustrations. The longest items were the editor's introductory editorial and a report of the Provincial Medical and Surgical Association's Eastern Branch. Other pages included a condensed version of Henry Warburton's Medical Reform Bill, book reviews, clinical papers, and case notes. There were columns of advertisements. Inclusive of stamp duty it cost, a price which remained until 1844. In their main article, Green and Streeton noted that they had received as many advertisements in proportion to the quantity of letterpress for our first number as the most popular medical journal, The Lancet, after 17 years of existence. In their introductory editorial and later statements, Green and Streeton defined the main objects of promotion of which the Provincial Medical and Surgical Journal is established. Summarist, there were two clear main objectives, the advancement of the profession, especially in the provinces and the dissemination of medical knowledge. Green and Streeton also expressed interest in promoting public well-being as well as maintaining medical practitioners as a class in that rank of society which, by their intellectual acquirements, by their general moral character, and by the importance of the duties entrusted to them, they are justly entitled to hold. In April 1842 the journal was retitled the Provincial Medical Journal and Retrospect of the Medical Sciences, but two years later reverted to the PMSJ under the sole editorship of Streeton. It was then in 1857 that the BMJ first appeared when the PMSJ was merged with the Associated Medical Journal Vols 1-4, 1853-1856, which had itself evolved from the London Medical Journal Vols 1-4, 1849-1852 under the editorship of John Rose Cormack. The BMJ published the first centrally randomist controlled trial. The journal also carried the seminal papers on the causal effects of smoking on health and lung cancer and other causes of death in relation to smoking. For a long time, the journal's sole competitor was The Lancet, also based in the UK, but with increasing globalisation, the BMJ has faced tough competition from other medical journals, particularly the New England Journal of Medicine and the Journal of the American Medical Association. Turning our focus to journal content, let's explore its key elements. The BMJ is an advocate of evidence-based medicine. It publishes research as well as clinical reviews, recent medical advances, editorial perspectives, among others. A special Christmas edition is published annually on the Friday before Christmas. This edition is known for research articles which apply a serious academic approach to investigating less serious medical questions. The results are often humorous and widely reported by the mainstream media. The BMJ has an open peer review system, wherein authors are told who reviewed their manuscript. About half the original articles are rejected after review in-house. 
Manuscripts chosen for peer review are first reviewed by external experts who comment on the importance and suitability for publication before the final decision on a manuscript is made by the editorial hanging committee. The acceptance rate is less than 7% for original research articles. At the beginning of February 2021, the BMJ introduced a charge of £299 sterling for publishing obituaries. This was widely criticised on social media, including by the British Medical Association, due to the large number of medical staff being killed by COVID-19. The decision was explained, but reversed, by the end of the month. Get ready for a thought-provoking discussion as we delve into rapid recommendations and its impact on our understanding. In response to the many problems with traditional medical guidelines, the journal introduced BMJ Rapid Recommendations, a series of trustworthy guidelines focused on the most pressing medical issues. With our curiosity piqued, let's embark on a dedicated exploration of rapid responses and its fascinating intricacies. The BMJ publishes most e-letters to the journal on its website under the heading Rapid Responses, organized as a fully moderated internet forum. Comments are screened for unacceptable content such as libel or obscenity, and contributors may not remove or edit contributions once published. As of January 2013, 88,500 rapid responses had been posted on the BMJ website. With our foundation established, it's time to explore indexing and citations and its relevance to our overarching theme. The BMJ is included in the major indexes PUMD, M-E-D-L-I-N-E, E-B-S-C-O, and the Science Citation Index. The journal has long criticized the misuse of the impact factor toward grants and recruit researchers by academic institutions. The five journals that cited the BMJ most often in 2008 were in order of descending citation frequency the BMJ, Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews, The Lancet, BMC Public Health, and BMC Health Services Research. In the same year, the five journals most frequently cited by articles published in the BMJ were the BMJ, The Lancet, The New England Journal of Medicine, Journal of the American Medical Association and Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews. Let's now turn our gaze towards impact and explore the fascinating connections it has to offer. In the 2022 Journal Citation Reports, published in 2022, the BMS impact factor was 105.7, ranking it fourth among general medical journals. However, the BMJ in 2013 reported that it had become a signatory to the San Francisco Declaration on Research Assessment commonly known as the DORA Agreement, which deprecates the inappropriate use of general impact factors and urges journal publishers to greatly reduce the emphasis on the general impact factor as a promotional tool, ideally by ceasing to promote the impact factor or by presenting it in the context of a variety of journal-based metrics. As we transition, let's shed light on Cello Scrotum Hoax article and its relevance to our ongoing exploration. In 1974, Elaine Murphy submitted a brief case report under her husband's name John which suggested a condition known as Cello Scrotum, a fictional condition which supposedly affected male cellists. It was originally submitted as a joke in response to guitar nipple a condition similar to Jobber's nipple in which some forms of guitar playing causes irritation to the nipple, which Murphy and her husband believed was also a joke. The case report was published in the BMJ and although not widely cited, it was cited on some occasions with those doing so expressing skepticism. The truth of the case was reported on back in 1991. In 2009, 35 years after the original case report was published, Murphy wrote a letter to the BMJ revealing that the condition was a hoax. In the upcoming section, we'll be shining a light on website and access policies. The BMJ went fully online in 1995 and archived all its issues on the World Wide Web. In addition to the print content, the site contains supporting material for original research articles, additional news stories, and electronic letters to the editors. From 1999, 
all content of the BMJ was free available online. However, in 2006 this changed to subscription model. Regional research articles continue to be available freely, but from January 2006 all other added value contents, including clinical reviews and editorials, require subscription. The BMJ allows complete free access for visitors from economically disadvantaged countries as part of the HINORI initiative. In October 2008, the BMJ announced that it would become an open access journal for research articles. A subscription continued to be required for access to other articles. Without wasting any more time, let's jump into the fascinating world of editions. The BMJ is principally an online journal, and only the website carries the full text content of every article. However, a number of print editions are produced targeting different groups of readers with selections of content, some of it abridged, and different advertising. The print editions are a general practice weekly for general practitioners, clinical research weekly for hospital doctors, academic monthly for institutions, researchers, and medical academics. In addition, the BMJ also publishes a number of overseas foreign language editions, Argentine in Spanish, Greek, Romanian, Chinese, and Middle Eastern in English. There is also Student BMJ, an online resource for medical students and junior doctors which publishes an annual print edition each September. Without further ado, let's move on to the topic of other services and information. The BMJ offers several alerting services, free on request this week in the BMJ, weekly table of contents email, latest research, video, blogs and editorial comment. Editor's choice, Cameron Obossi introduces a selection of the latest research, medical news, comment and education each week. Today on Bcom Daily Alert with links to a short selection of articles published in the BMJ in the previous 24 hours. Get ready to immerse yourself in the world of editors as we examine its impact and relevance. He Hennis Green and Robert Street and Robert Street and W. H. Ranking and J. H. Walsh, John Rose Cormack, Andrew Winter, William Orlando Markham, Ernest Hart, Jonathan Hutchinson, Ernest Hart, Sir Dawson Williams, Norman Gerald Horner, Hugh Clegg, Martin West, Stephen Locke, Richard Smith, Cameron Obossi, Acting EIC 2005, Fiona Godley, Cameron Obossi. Share this video with your friends and spread the knowledge.